Welcome to MedTech 32 Setup Webinar. Good afternoon, my name is Caroline Birkinshaw. I'm one of the training team here at MedTech. I'm going to take you through some of the setup options in MedTech 32 today. And um, we're going to cover accounting, appointment templates, outbox, screening, read code, and keywords. This is the beginning of probably a series of webinars on the setup because we cannot cover all the features in one session. Okay, so we'll start with um, some of the accounting setup options for services. So your services menu covers all the things that you charge your patients for. So to set up a new service, and what do all these options mean? Well, first of all, we give our service a code. It needs to be a unique code, not used anywhere else, even in active codes. A description, a service fee, and it's probably easier to demonstrate this using an existing service. So I'll switch for, from this one to an existing service, and let's choose the consultation as an example. So C is the code that's used, consultation is the description, and in this case, the service fee is $70. The fee that normally goes into this is box here because obviously you charge different service fees for different age groups and, um, and enrollment status. The fee that goes into this box here is usually the fee that is the highest fee that you charge any of those groups of patients, which in most circumstances would be an A3 casual patient. So this is the fee that you'd put in here. If you're not attaching a subsidy to your service, you don't need to worry about that. It's just the charge that you're going to charge the patient. If you are setting up some new fees, for instance, you're putting your fee up for the, um, for the month, um, maybe July, which is often a, a common month that people raise their fees. Rather than having to come in on the 31st, 30th of June, on, um, on the day before, to spend time setting it all up in order to take effect the following day, you can set a new service fee up and apply an effective date. So the effective date can be any time in the future. So this gives you plenty of time to create your new service fees and get them set up. Service group. In this case, the service group would be service, because that is what the consultation is, as opposed to an immunization or a consumable. Provider tab, this is only rarely used. The provider tab, the provider option in here allows this service only to be used by that provider. So when that provider is selected in as the provider in the um, as a service provider in the F9 screen, then this service code could be used for that provider, but no other staff member. So it's, it is quite rarely used, but if you do need a code that only applies to one provider, it's quite useful to have. If your service fee has a start and an end date, you can enter this here. Normally speaking, um, it doesn't apply because your service fees are ongoing. But sometimes um, your something, someone like your PHO might give you a um, some money um, to spend on a certain service, but it's only going to last for six months. So, in order to prevent staff from invoicing for that service before or after that date, the start date, then those can be entered into these fields here. Provider type. Again, another very useful two fields which can be applied to any of your services. In this case, we could apply this to a general practitioner, GP, which is exactly the correct um, 
field to put in here. So this would, have, would, would um, confine this service code to only being applied to people who are identified as GPs. You can put in two provider types. So it could be, it wouldn't apply in this case, but it could be that this service fee could be applied to a nurse as well or a nurse practitioner. So you can enter those in here as well. Where you would do that is, or, or how should I say it? Um, how do you know that the, it would only apply to GPs? And the answer to that is, I'm just going to save this and come out and I'll show you where that uh, flag is. So in the setup, staff members, And if we open up a GP, on the tab that says provider slash ACC forms, you have a provider type in here. So if you want to apply that service code to just GPs, then that provider must have GP selected in here or the correct service type that you would want to apply and OK. So then everyone that is tagged as a general practitioner in this box here, the service code when applied in the accounting services apply to that provider. So now Barry Beta will be included in this. So if the provider, service provider on a F9 screen was someone other than a general practitioner, then the consultation code could not be used. That makes it much easier so that mistakes aren't made and the C for consultation apply to nurses instead of just general practitioners. Quantity-based service is um, fairly self-explanatory. If it was a consumable, for instance, you can apply a quantity based service. So you can choose units from the drop down. If it was some a, a service that you applied distance to, then you can apply the number of kilometers by ensuring it's a quantity based service and distance is selected. And if it was a time based service, so you wanted to apply 30 minutes, an hour, and that would apply the service fee times by the number of hours that was applied. Not for capitated is tick here is if you're a capitated site and this was a non-capitated service, you could apply that here. The apply percentage is some as an as a it does work, but it's very, very complex and it works in a very strange way. Um, it's, it's something that was put in right at the very beginning when MedTech 32 was developed and nobody really is quite sure as to what the intent of this was, was originally was. Fixed fee, if $70 cannot be discounted or increased, then apply a fixed fee so that only $70 can be applied to this service code. If it was a non-consultation service, for instance, a repeat prescription, uh, a consumable, then it would be a non-consultation service. So these are services where the patient is not in, in directly involved in the service. Trigger treatments are used for um, physiotherapists, chiropractors, who have a limit on the number of service codes that can be applied for a specific period of time. Annotation is if you would like to annotate your service, so this would be an annotation that was permanently applied to this particular service, as opposed to the annotations on the F9 screen, which only apply to the single invoice or claim. A subsidy is where you would apply a subsidy to your um, service code. In most cases, you would um, not need to do this 
because if a service code was being set up that had required a, a new um, subsidy attached to it, that would normally come to you as an upgrade in the MedTech versions um, because this would have been applied by one of the agencies at the Ministry of Health or ACC. GMS utility. Everyone either loves this or hates it. So I'm going to just quickly go through with you some of the essential um, facts that you need to know when you are using the GMS utility, um, which is why a lot of people struggle with it, or if you are struggling with it, why people struggle. So the GMS utility can be found on Insight. If you go to the MedTech resources, you'll be able to download the latest GMS utility. The one that's currently there at the moment is May, and the subsidies are up to date. So download it, and then when you open it, it will open up as an Excel spreadsheet, so you'll need to ensure that you have access to Excel when you've downloaded the utility. So this is what the utility looks like. And some principles need to be applied, first of all. So you've got some tabs along the bottom here. The first tab is the subsidies. Now you need to ensure that your subsidies are up to date. So as I said, the latest version of the GMS um, utility is May. And so these are the service, the subsidies that applied in May and are current in June as well. But if they are increased and the GMS utility hasn't been updated to, to reflect that, you will need to come in here and change each of the subsidy increases, if it's GMS or ACC or to the AGPN. So once you know that your subsidies are correct, if we use the consultation as an example, the fee that goes into here must be the same fee as is in the MedTech service fee field. So if we come back into MedTech 32 and to the main tab, remember the $70, which is the highest amount we're going to charge for an A3 patient, that is the fee that must go into the service code here. So with those two things in place, your formula should now work exactly as it is supposed to. So to calculate your GMS utility, you only put figures in the top section of the table here. You do not put any figures in the bottom part of the table. So we start with the A1, 18 to 24 year olds, and what you put in this box is what you are going to charge them as a co-payment. So if it was $30 or $40, what are you going to charge your A3? Now, the three different tables are for your registered patients who are not funded, your casual patients, and your funded patients. And the difference between your funded patients and your registered patients is because your registered patients are not funded yet, you are uh, able to claim GMS until they are funded. So you, because you don't want to miss out on that, then having the correct fee in here will enable the correct GMS to be um, claimed for. So once you've added what you're charging each of the age groups in all these sections, and often the registered um, co-payments and the funded co-payments are the same, but not always. And what you would charge your J's and your C's and your Y's would go in here. Once you've filled all these boxes in, the formula that sits within the spreadsheet will be applied here.
Once you've added all your fees, co-payment fees in, in these boxes, the formula will apply itself in this table below. When you print this by coming up to File, Print, this is the box you need to look at. And you take this back to, Evolu to MedTech 32, And on the GMS adjustment, you type the, those. Then into your GMS table on your service fee, you would apply each of those, those formula figures to the correct box in this table. So you're copying what is in here onto here. When you save those changes and apply them, then it should then, or it will, <laughs> it actually will, <laughs> give you the correct co-payments. So I hope that helps you with um, managing your GMS adjustment table. The last tab on here is stock items. So if you're putting in a consumable as your service code, and you would like to calculate it as a stock item, then pop a tick in here. You can put in here how many you have, if it was bandages, for instance, how many you have in the cupboard. What you would like your uh, minimum level to get to before you get a reminder that you're getting low. So that could be 10, five, and um, you'll get a reminder pop up when you've invoiced for the um, last one up to that level. You can put your supplier in from your from your uh, address book. It can go in here. Product number if you have one, and your cost price. And the very last tab on your service fee is your um, audit, and this screen has an audit log to show you exactly what was changed and by whom and when. So that covers adding a new service code. So we'll move on now to the appointment template. Find a template that hasn't been completed. We can look at this one here. So filling in a new template from scratch you would isolate the day you wanted to start the template going. Put a tick in, apply six months if this is a permanent position and the GPs or the, the provider is going to continue working um, into the future. The, the apply six months means that it will always be six months in advance. It doesn't mean that you have to do anything in six months time. If the provider, however, is here for a period of time, a known period of time, maybe a locum, for instance, then you can select the time date, sorry, the date that the um, provider will be finishing the template. The start time is the time that they start working. So um, it's the time of the first appointment. The end time is the time they finish, or hope to finish, say five o'clock. Oops, 5 p.m. I'll come back to these two in a second. These um, options here, you can select the days of the week they're going to be working. If maybe they have a completely different template a couple of days of the week, then you can leave those blank. And this would be a one weekly cycle if each week the template is going to be the same. If every second week they did a different template, then you can select a two weekly cycle, which would apply from the date that you set up here. Three weekly, four weekly and five weekly are the same principle. 
So over here is where you would build your appointment template. So from eight o'clock in the morning, and the two time is until they have their first official break. So if you want a space marked out for a break um, that cannot be filled, or you don't want to have filled, um, then you, 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 would, you would choose the time that the break would start. So let's suggest uh, 10.30 and we'll give him a morning tea break. So the duration is the duration of the appointments from between that time and that time. So in this case, we will select 15 minutes and it's going to be available. You could type in here. That would give you a sort of background, what we call wallpaper, which is sort of a background notice. Uh, this is this type of appointment is his normal consulting appointments. Or you can just leave it blank. It, most times it's left blank. And then we're going to add a line. So we click on add. And from 10.30 till 10.45, we're going to put in another 15 minutes. And this time, not going to be available. And we can type in here that it's a break. Or you could type morning tea. What you can't do is type 10 minutes in here. So um, because my appointment time is from 10.30 to 10.45, which is a 15 minute duration, I can't have a 10 minute duration in here. It has to match. And then we're going to add, and this time we can add until lunchtime. And this time he might only want 10 minute appointments. But unfortunately that won't work and you will get an error message if you try to apply this as appointment as a template. And the reason is that 10 minute appointments do not fit between 10.45 and 12.30. There would be a five minute um, orphan appointment left over. So we will apply the template from uh, 10.45 to 12.30, we'll use 15 minute appointments or change the duration here from 10.30 to 10.40, which will be a 10 minute break. And then from 10.40 to 12.30, you would then be able to fit 10 minute appointments in. And you continue to add this way until you have filled your day up. And the last appointment for the day must be the same as time as the time over here. So from 1, uh, 12.30 till 2 p.m., he's not going to be available. You ready to have, have lunch. And then from 12, 2 p.m. till 5 p.m., he can have 15-minute appointments again. Or you could say till 4 p.m., had 15-minute appointments. And at the very end of the day, you could slot in some quick 10-minute um, appointments, which would be urgent only. This gives you a few examples of how you can create a different templates. If you forget and you need to go back and add another a line in the middle because you meant to put a break in and you didn't, you can come in and click insert and that will put another spare line in above the line below. And likewise, you can delete a line. If this template applied to other staff members or new providers, then you could select them as well and the template would apply to their work, working day as also. And we can go OK, and that will apply. You see, I haven't got any something in there quite correct. So I didn't put in the duration. So it really does help you and tries to help you um, to correct any errors that you have made. OK, so it doesn't fit evenly, which is what you will get as an error message. Um, when you don't, so I've put two hours in here and actually it's not two hours, it's only one, third, one and a half hour. 
So as I said, these are the errors that you get when you're building your template if it's not quite perfect. So opening it up again, I thought I'd explain what these two mean. With the special, what this indicates is it's a different day to other days. So it changes color and it becomes blue. Often in a practice, more than one person um, is managing the templates. And so somebody might change this template for him to finish at four o'clock or start at nine o'clock. By marking it as special indicates that although the time has been changed, it's been changed intentionally and you don't need to go in and worry about it. Uh, it wasn't a mistake. Really, that's all it does. So it just changes the color. Day off is fairly self-explanatory. It marks the day off as a day, marks the day as a day off. And you can pop a note in here to say that it's a day off. I'm not working today. And then everything's taken out except that note that will be applied. One more thing with the appointment template is we do get a lot of calls to say that um, suddenly my appointment template is is building itself. It's doing it's creating new templates and nobody's done it. It's just doing it randomly. This will be because of a setting in your staff setup. So if we go into the staff setup and to the provider tab, if your template is suddenly starting to um, add templates that weren't specified, you will have autogen ticked in here. Take the tick out and it will stop doing it. It's auto generating an appointment template. So, next we will go to Outbox. So, to set up a new Outbox document, we're just set up, going to set up a new text document. A, 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 yeah, a, Text, a rich text document as opposed to a Word document. We will do the Word documents in an advanced um, setup session. So to set up a new document, again, we give it a code and we fill out some of these boxes here. To demonstrate it, it's easier to use an existing template to show you. So your document needs a unique code, so it must be different either from um, either even from um, inactive codes. Folder usually goes into a document folder, which is at the top here. And the format is text. This is a text editor called Rich Text, which comes free with Windows and doesn't, does not require an external word processor to work. So it's not SMS. SMS is not T-E-X-T. -E you can apply this to, this whole document can always go to a specific person from your address book. So you can, the referrer that you're sending this document, if it's the same person all the time or the same um, uh, receiver all the time, then you can apply this from your address book. So if this always goes to Auckland Radiology or if it always goes to Dr. Basil Rush, then you can um, select someone from your appointment book to apply this to. If you permanently always send a carbon copy to someone, again, you can select that person from the or company from the address book. And this document will always add a co carbon copy. You can add carbon copies and refer to as you use the document also. You can put a referral type if it's a particular type, so if it's radiology referral or a physio referral or hospital, and a cost for producing the document. 
paper size, you can select a paper size with an A4, A5. And you can print it in landscape if you prefer that to portrait, which is the default. You can select to have your logo printing at the top of your document. And you can reserve some lines at the bottom for inserting um, your header or footer if you've set that up in the um, setup. Also, if this is a document that is um, that where you might need a reminder to follow up on after this document's been sent, then you can set up a reminder to go into your tasks. And which provider it would go to. This again can also be done um, as you are doing with, as you're on individual letters as you're doing them. So then we move into the body of the document and we have some merge fields. So this means that you can then apply this document to as many different people as you would wish to. So we're going to pick up some merge fields. So the top of the document here we have the, this is obviously a document for a, um, a GP. So this is going to pick up the NZ uh, Nursing Council or the NZ Medical Council, depending on which, um, num which merge field we have entered here. I'm going to take this out and then I'm going to show you how you would insert a merge field. So to look for that one again, I'm going to go into the insert button. And in this case, it was a GP insert field that we want to look for. So it will be the provider, oh, sorry, the GP. And it was the medical council or the um, nursing council number. So in this case, you've got the medical council here use that one or we could find the GP, the nurse and that goes in here. Likewise with the medical council, pop your cursor where you want the um, merge the merge field to go and we'll look for miscellaneous this this time and we've got various date options. today's date you can have a long a long version or a short version okay and we keep on continue on to add the various merge fields that you you want to enter and then type in the body of the document and okay you can change the select all and change the style of document so you can you've got some options in here you can change the size you can bold italicize and justify right left and center and put bullet points in those are about the main um, editing features that this free windows editing tool allows okay So the next one we're going to look at is the recall screening, setting up a new screening term. So we're going to go into screening terms. And again, we've got a new option and some different fields to fill out in here. So again, it's probably easier to demonstrate using an existing screening term. We'll look at blood pressure, for instance. So a unique code and a description, whether this applies to a single gender or um, all genders, and the group that it's to go into. So we could choose this is going to be a screening, so we can set up screening. We can apply a recall document. So this is a letter that would go out to the patient when you are doing your recall contact list um, or you're doing a recall merge from the query builder. 
this would be the letter that would be sent out. So you'd set up your letter first as an outbox document, and then you can choose your letter template that you want to apply to this screening term when you want to send it out. Also, you can send a SMS. So again, you must set up your SMS document, which we covered in an earlier webinar on SMS. And choose the SMS text message that you want to apply to this screening term. Also, if it was a Manage My Health recall, you would create your Manage My Health document and send that out too. The default outcome would be whatever outcomes you've set up, which you can have a look at in a second. We've set, you can set some outcomes up. Which is the most likely outcome um, for this particular screening? So we could choose normal. And the default recall for a normal outcome could be a year. And that would be your default. This can be overridden when you actually put the screening term in. Then you'd want some measurements, maybe. Not all screening terms have measurements. Some have none, some have a few, some have many. The, the most measurements that you can add to a screening term is 32. So in this case, we've got two measurements, a systolic and a diastolic. And two, you can add a third one by coming into this box here and adding a third measurement. In this case, we'll view the measurements that we currently have. So we're going to give it a name. So it's a diastolic. You don't have to type the whole part in. Everybody knows that when you're giving a blood pressure, DIA stands for diastolic, but we could put the whole word in. Probably better if I could spell it right. But, um, we'll leave it at that. Uh, what sort of um, data type is this? And it has text here, but in fact, it's a number. So we can change that to a number. And in the case of a diastolic, you're not going to get a diastolic number higher than three characters. So I can change the number of characters here down to three. If you put eight in, as was there before, it allows for typo errors to go in. And these um, can be quite confusing if you've typed, meant to type in 190 and you typed in 1090 by mistake because it would give you a completely false reading. So restricting it to the number of um, characters that the maximum, then you can't add in a fourth character. Units, if that applied, so if we were doing something like um, an HbA1c, we might put millimoles per milliliter in here. The hint, what would be the hint for a diastolic? Um, so this might be an explanation as to why you're putting a diastolic um, measurement into the screening term. So you have quite a bit of uh, room here to add a hint if that applies. A valid range. So a valid range for a diastolic blood pressure would, is unlikely to be between zero and a thousand. So that would not be the valid range that you would put in. So a valid range, I'm not a nurse, so I'm not going to guess what that might be, but it might be something like um, 90 to 190. Not sure. If you are updating using mapping, and we're not going to be covering mapping today, again, that will be done in an advanced setup session, then how old would you want your blood pressure to be, your diastolic blood pressure to be before a new one overrode it? So if it was only valid for three months, then you would, um, it wouldn't map if it was older than three months. Required is a compulsory field. So if you've opened up the um, screening term, you must put in a measurement and before you can um, save it. 
So sometimes you want compulsory fields in here. You can delete the measurement. You can tick to update it, which applies this um, three month period. And that's all there is to it. There are some other types of measurements that you can put in because we've chosen a number here and we can have free text measurements. If I add another one, we could have a combo measurement. So if we chose a combo, then we would need to put some choices in so that you can choose from those options. So we might add a yes or a no or whatever the combination might be. You can also use a tick box. So that would apply a tick box to your measurement. So you're giving it a name and you're ticking whatever the result might be, that it's done, maybe. So you choose done and tick. You can also choose an NHI number and a date field. To get um, familiar with adding these measurements and what they do and how they can be applied, there is a, um, a screening term in your list called DIAP. Now, it's not often used these days. Some people use it. It's called the Diabetes Project, and it might be in your um, inactive list if you can't see it in your, your screening terms. This was put in by MedTech um, some years ago when the Diabetes Annual Review Project was, um, was in full swing. But it is a good template to look at what you can do. So by opening it up and coming to the measurements, you can see all the different ways that this um, template has been built. And it's been built with almost the maximum number of fields. I think there's 28 in here. Oh, 29 and 32 is the maximum number of measurement fields that you can enter in here. So some of these are combo boxes and they have choices behind them. This one is a yes, no choice. Um, some will be other types of choices. You've got ethnicity fields, you've got decimal fields and combo fields. And so if you're looking to build a reasonably complex screening term, this is a very good one to go and have a look at first. And um, once you can figure out how this one is done, then it makes it very much easier to build your own. So there's a few little tips and tricks around screening terms. Adding a new local read code. So new local read codes can be added and they're done in setup, clinical, read. So a couple of options in here. We can simply add a new local read code. So something that has doesn't apply or doesn't doesn't um, need to be placed in any other area of the read codes. It stands by itself. Would be a new local read code. It's just checking that that's what you want to do. And you could call it whatever you would like to. You don't need to fill the second and third boxes in here. These are for the um, length of the term. It's just if unless you're putting a term in that has more than 60 characters, you would put that in here. But the top box is generally quite sufficient to add in the maximum length of 30 characters. Then over here, you would add a keyword. The keyword might be test. And you can add in more keywords. So whatever words you can think of that would be make finding your read code easy. And go OK. Tick that it's on the common list, which is make sure that ticks there so that you can find it easily. And OK. Then when you go to search for your test, just type test and up, your, up will come your local read code. The other way of doing it is to find an existing read code. So if, it, if your new read code belongs in a family of 
existing read codes, then search for the read code first, let's say diabetes, Uh, yeah, I did this one earlier. So I added a new read code within the tree of existing diabetes read codes. So um, how I did that was to bring up diabetes, or um, C10. to do that, oh, to search. Okay, diabetes, mellitus, okay. And then I'm going to add a new read code within that branch of read codes. Yes, and that's when you get a Z code. Okay, and you can call it um, whatever you choose. And again, add some keywords to help you find it. And you can add as many as you like. Okay. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Go the patient up. And six and just save me from um save me from exiting yeah so here we have our test read code which is a standalone read code not associated with any other branch of read codes and here we have the test read code that is applied within the C10 um, codes, which are diabetes. So I hope that helps you if you need to do that. And lastly is the keywords. So keywords can be set up in setup, clinical, keyword. So this is the list of keywords that already exist. Um, to add a new one, click on new. We give our keyword a code. So call it T. And this is the place where we would type out our sentence. So it might be whatever you want to put in here as a keyword. So when you type that, when you put in a full stop on the consultation screen, this would be the keyword that would type out for you. So in this case, this is one here prepared earlier. The code is BN, and this is the sentence that will type out when you apply that keyword. So that's option one. And just another tip here, if you're trying to learn your read your keywords, if you're not you're new to the practice, if you right click, you can print this list out. I go into F12 and put a full stop and BN and enter, then that will now expand my sentence out. Another way of adding, read, uh, adding keywords is if as a provider I've typed in a, um, an amazing sentence, I want to add... Um, copy this one. So I've typed this all out in my um, consultation notes and I think wow that would make a really good keyword. Highlight it, might be a paragraph or so, highlight it and right click and copy it. Then at the end of the keyword that you've typed out, without putting a space in, right click. And you've got an option in here that says add a clinical keyword. If you add a keyword, then right click and paste. 
your keyword in here and give it a code that makes sense. And OK, and then you'll be able to use that keyword in the future by preceding it with a full stop or preceding the code with a full stop. So that's a nice, I've done that before. That's a nice quick way of doing it as a provider when you've already typed something out and you want to re reuse that sentence or paragraph as a keyword in the future. So we've just about come to the end. Well, we have actually just come to the end. So before I leave you, um, I said this the, the setup of MedTech is quite, quite exhaustive with both sort of beginner level and advanced level in each and every section of the setup, then we will run more um, options for you. So I think Belinda's going to send you out a um, survey form once this goes live on Insight. And uh, it will be good to get some feedback from you to tell us what you would like next whether you would like location settings, staff settings, or other options within the start within the setup menu of MedTech, and whether you would like beginner level or advanced level. If you have any questions relating to today's webinar, you can contact me on trainingnz at medtechglobal.com. So that was trainingnz at medtechglobal.com. If it's a question in relation to this webinar or any other webinar that we've that I've done, then um, they will be directed to me. So thank you for listening. And I do apologize for the um, technical issues we had in the first attempt, the live attempt. But I hope that um, you can get some useful information from this pre-recorded one. Thank you for listening.